putting these guys up here. These are the mounts that go onto the rail, which the rack will sit on, and then the solar panels will sit on the rack. So it's, what is it? Panel, rack, mount, rail, van. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. So what I'm hoping to be able to do is just take this little piece here. And so our positive is going to go, and this is going to the second panel, right? So this is the last panel. The first panel is just going to have this coming out of it. They're going to be wired in uh, series instead of parallel. These are, well, they're panels rated at anywhere between 16 and 17 and a half volts. So we'll have somewhere around 32 volts going down. Uh, and then that goes into the charge controller and then the charge controller is going to take that 32 volts and allow it to most efficiently charge that bank of batteries that are in parallel. Uh, the reason to do that is because I'm not going to always get 17 and a half or 16 volts out of these panels. It depends on you know, how cloudy it is or whatever the conditions are of the sun. So, so that it doesn't move and these are, these are really nice because there's a piece of foam in here that makes sure that we don't get any rain or anything in that. And then this, when it screws down, it tightens these little teeth up on there so that, um, so that this is not moving. <laughs> that was awesome. So there we go. Uh, this now needs to run to the second panel, which will be sitting side by side with this. So, I don't know, give myself enough slack. <laughs> I'm sure there's a more proper way to do this. Positive, meet your new friend Positive. So what we're gonna do to make this fit, is we're gonna stick two nuts on the end here of this long bolt. This channel, the way that it is here, kind of, it's made to slip things in, unfortunately. The only way that we can uh, really make this work is to put two nuts on the end of this thing because otherwise we won't be able to get a grip on it. I'm just going to finger tighten all of these down and then come through and really tighten them but I'll be able to grab onto the bottom of this so it doesn't spin. And so now we just do the same thing to all of these. Today's lesson mathematics is how many hackers can you fit on a roof? What's going to be really fun is when we've got both panels here and I can't really straddle the roof and we'll, I don't know, I'll like dance my way up here somehow. We're just gonna make it work. No matter what, it's just gonna work. Huzzah! You got a charge for right then? No voltage whatsoever. Oh, wait, what am I doing? It's not gonna report anything until I plug in the other panel. I'm only getting a negative off this. That's uh, what so I was like wondering. I'm like, like so I'm- I have some tickets to fail this website. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Well, they are expired. Yeah, that's what I need now. Expired tickets to the fail bus. <laughs> Panel number two. Welcome once again to Darren Tries Not to Fall Off the Roof of a Van 2013. Here we go. Locking washers. Where have you gone? Is this the mop? Well, we got two panels on the roof in series, so I'm getting um, 40 volts out of that. I'm going to take these guys and run them in line with, uh, well actually I'll just do it on the charge, uh, solar charge controller. Common negative, and if I do it right here, boom, that's the 50 amp. So that's the battery, 12.7 volts right there. And that's what I expect to see out of a single AGM. I'm going to plug the other AGMs, um, got a total of four of them, in parallel. So I'll still get 12.7 volts out of four of them. It's just instead of 108 amps, I'll end up with 440 some odd amps. Uh, and out of the solar panels, I'm getting 41.2 volts right now. And so that's pretty good considering they are, I think, I think they're both rated at 22 volts. So that's a maximum of 44 volts. I'm only losing, you know, almost three volts through cable loss. That's that's pretty efficient. The way that it works is the panels soak up the rays, they excite electrons, they go down this wire into this little baby circuit breaker. That goes into the charge controller. Uh, and then the charge controller uh, takes that energy, manipulates it in such a way that it can most optimally charge the battery bank. Uh, it has a bunch of different sensors for temperature and 
um, voltage so that it can you know figure out how happy these batteries are and what they want you know there's different charging soul uh, cycles based on their capacity and uh, then it just sends it back down through this through the circuit breaker again a 50 amp and then into the battery bank and uh, what I'm gonna do now is plug in my uh, controller unit it's got a little RJ 11 and then I should be able to just go ahead and um, fire this guy up battery bank first and then solar after that and the uh, LEDs should fire on and then it should start telling me all sorts of good stuff so let's let's do it we got hardware and software versions there we go 12.8 volts and it says zero watts and it's nighttime so that's not right oh right it says it's nighttime because it's not getting any power from the uh, solar array it's getting 12.8 volts from my battery which is what I expect to get but zero watts of power from the solar array it's nighttime because I haven't thrown the circuit breaker for the panel so as soon as I do this there we go no longer nighttime so they are 130 watt panels so I should have a maximum of 260 watts coming from them and I'm getting 250 watts so I'm losing 10 watts to cable or whatever have you but that's not bad 250 watts think about that that would run a small computer except we're not doing anything stupid like that because we're using energy efficient stuff like you know that one amp hour refrigerator off DC power and all of these other small devices off DC power this is so exciting it seems to be working it's the magic smoke did not come out I want to take a minute to thank our good friends over at Domain.com and let you guys know that when you're thinking about that domain name, you're looking at all the options, I want you to consider yourself a .NET. In fact, it's actually my favorite TLD. I first got DarrenKitchen.net before even the com. I just find them great. The first five TLDs, of course, org, edu, mil, gov, the other one, .NET was in there too. And let me tell you, it is the third most popular TLD in existence. So when you're looking to get your dot com your dot net get them both you know protect your brand and when you're looking to get one of those do what Shannon and I do we love domain.com because one they've been supporting us and this awesome adventure and, uh, and two they're so much fun to work with you can tweet them at domain.com they're awesome customer service you know it's domain registration without all the BS so you can go over to domain.com right now they're hooking you guys up because they're such a fan of hack5 and you that you can get 15% off their already affordable domain names and hosting. All you have to do is use a coupon code HAK5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Last week's trivia question was... <clears throat> what is TKIP and how does it make WPA2 a better security choice for your wireless network? And the answer was obviously, temporal key integrity protocol, and it forces a key to change every 10,000 packets or so. Now this week's question is, what is the true statement regarding WEP cracking? Initialization vectors are small, or are they large? They get reused frequently, and they are sent in clear text, or is it encrypted during transmission instead of clear text? Hmm, you can answer that over at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack5 swag.